Hi, welcome to Archiversity Online Classes. In this lecture, I am going to explain you the concept of cost of a capital. Cost of a capital is also called as a minimum rate of return or minimum required rate of return. Cost of capital is used to evaluate projects. In other terms, cost of capital is also called as required rate of return. It is also called as a discount rate. It is also called as a hurdle rate. There are many uh, applications of cost of a capital in corporate finance. Cost of capital is used in discounting the future cash flows of a project, whether it is a new project or an expansion project, and will help uh, managers to determine whether to go with the project or not. In this lecture, I will explain you what exactly the cost of a capital and what are the various components of cost of a capital. Companies need capital for various purposes like uh, going to new projects or for the expansion of existing projects or purchasing a new machinery or equipment. So for these all these purposes they need a capital. Companies source this capital from various ways or various forms. In the sense majorly companies source capital in the form of equity and in the form of a debt. So these two that is equity and a debt plays a major part of a capital of any company. In equity the companies may source in the form of a common stocks or company may source from uh, through preference stock that is by issuing a preference stock or for an existing company there may be a retained earnings. And when it comes to the debt companies source debt in the form of debentures or by issuing a long term uh, bonds or by borrowing loans from a banks and financial institutions. So when they borrow money uh, from each of different sources like a common stock, preference stock, returned earnings, debentures, bonds and loans, the investors who are lending or investing this money have an expected return. That means suppose if a common stockholder investing into an, in the form of a equity shares of a company, he will have certain required rate. So we call this as a required rate of a return, let us say R of a equity shareholders. Similarly, preference shareholders by investing into a stock, they may have expected required rate of a return. So this is a required rate for a preference shareholders. On the other hand, debenture holders who lend a money to the company, they may uh, expect certain return in the form of a coupon payments that is required rate for a debenture holders. Each and every form of investors required rate becomes cost of a capital of a company. In the sense, this the company need to generate revenues by its new projects or by expansion of these projects. They need to generate a revenues and through these revenues they have to pay the cost. In the sense that they have to meet the expectations of the investors. To evaluate the projects, what we do is we will ascertain what is the total cost that is overall cost of capital of this company. That means let us say if the overall cost of capital is 12%, then a new project which a company is doing should yield you anything more than a 12%. So your decision to accept a project is your overall cost of capital plus premium. Now in a cost of a capital, what is that we do is we will ascertain cost of each individual capital that is uh, expected rate of return of a common stockholders, preference stockholders and debenture holders. We summarize that and we calculated weighted average cost of a capital and which we use as an required rate of a return. Why we call this as a cost of a capital is this is the cost which the company has to pay to the different forms of uh, capital sources or capital suppliers. In my coming lectures, I will explain you how to calculate cost of each of these components that is cost of a debentures or a debt, cost of preferences, cost of a common stock, cost of a returned earnings and the cost of a loans. Thank you.